The middle of the 20th century was marked by a significant and persistent increase in fertility rates in many countries of the world, especially in the West, resulting in the famous baby boomer generation. Although the baby boom traditionally considered to be the post-war phenomenon started immediately after World War II, some demographers place it earlier, at the increase of births during the war or in the late 1930s. The boom coincided with the marriage boom, a significant increase in nuptiality. The increase in fertility was driven primarily by decrease in childlessness and increase in parity progression to a second child. In most of the Western countries, progression to a third child and beyond declined which, coupled with aforementioned increase in transition to first and second child, resulted in higher homogeneity in family sizes. The baby boom was most prominent among educated and economically active women. The baby boom ended with the significant decline in fertility in 1960s and 1970s which was later called by demographers the baby bust. Topic. Causes Economist and demographer Richard Easterlin in his 20th Century American Population Growth 2000, explains the growth pattern of the American population in the 20th century by examining the fertility rate fluctuations and the decreasing mortality rate. Easterlin attempts to prove the cause of the baby boom and baby bust by the relative income theory, despite the various other theories that these events have been attributed to. The relative income theory suggests that couples choose to have children based on a couple's ratio of potential earning power and the desire to obtain material objects. This ratio depends on the economic stability of the country and how people are raised to value material objects. The relative income Theory explains the baby boom by suggesting that the late 1940s and the 1950s brought low desires to have material objects, because of the Great Depression and World War II, as well as plentiful job opportunities being a post-war period. These two factors gave rise to a high relative income, which encouraged high fertility. Following this period, the next generation had a greater desire for material objects, however, an economic slowdown in the United States made jobs harder to acquire. This resulted in lower fertility rates causing the baby bust. Jan van Bavel and David S. Rayer proposed that the increase in nuptiality marriage boom coupled with low efficiency of contraception was the main cause of the baby boom. They doubted the explanations including the Easterlin hypothesis which considered the post-war economic prosperity that followed deprivation of the Great Depression as main cause of the baby boom, stressing that GDP birth rate association was not consistent positive before 1945 and negative after with GDP growth accounting for a mere 5% of the variance in the crude birth rate over the period studied by the authors. Data shows that only in few countries there was significant and persistent increase in the marital fertility index during the baby boom, which suggests that most of the increase in fertility was driven by the increase in marriage rates. Jonah Shalikens claims that the rise in male earnings that started in the late 1930s accounts for most of the rise in marriage rates and that Richard Easterlin's hypothesis according to which a relatively small birth cohort entering the labor market caused the marriage boom is not consistent with with data from the United States, Matthias Derpka, Moshe Hazan, and Yishe Maoz all argued that the baby boom was mainly caused by the alleged crowding out from labor force of females who reached adulthood in 1950s by females who start to work during the Second World War and do not quit job after the economy recovered. Andriana Bellu and Emanuela Cardia promote similar argument, but they claiming that it were women who entered labor force during the Great Depression who crowded out women who participate in the baby boom. Glenn Sandstrom disagrees with both variants of this interpretation based on the data from Sweden showing that an increase in nuptiality which was one of the main causes of an increase in fertility was limited to economically active women. He pointed out that in 1939 a law prohibiting the firing of a woman when she got married was passed in the country. Greenwood, Seshadri, and Vandenbricki ascribed the baby boom to the diffusion of new household appliances that led to reduction of costs of childbearing. 
However Martha J. Bailey and William J. Collins criticize their explanation on the basis that improvement of household technology began before baby boom, differences and changes in ownership of appliances and electrification in U.S. Counties are negatively correlated with birth rates during baby boom, that the correlation between cohort fertility of the relevant women and access to electrical service in early adulthood is negative, and that Amish also experienced the baby boom. Judith Blake and Prithwas Das Gupta point out the increase in ideal family size in the times of baby boom. Peter Lindet partially attribute the baby boom to the extension of income tax coverage on most of U.S. population in the early 1940s. The latter actualize already existed and newly created tax exemptions for children and married couples creating the new incentive for earlier marriage and higher fertility. It is proposed that because of the fact that the taxation was progressive the baby boom was more pronounced among the richer population. <laughs> By region North America In United States and Canada volume of the baby boom was among the highest in the world. In 1946, live births in the U.S. surged from 222,721 in January to 339,499 in October. By the end of the 1940s, about 32 million babies had been born, compared with 24 million in the 1930s. In 1954, annual births first topped 4 million and did not drop below that figure until 1965, when 4 out of 10 Americans were under the age of 20. As a result of the marriage boom getting married immediately after high school was becoming commonplace and women were increasingly under tremendous pressure to marry by the age of 20. The stereotype developed that women were going to college to earn their MRS Mrs. degree. The baby boom was stronger among American Catholics than among Protestants. The exact beginning and end of the baby boom is debated. The U.S. Census Bureau defines baby boomers as those born between mid-1946 and mid-1964, although the U.S. birth rate began to shoot up in 1941 and to decline after 1957. Deborah Carr considers baby boomers to be those born between 1944 and 1959, while Strauss and Howe place the beginning of the baby boom in 1943. In Canada, the baby boom is usually defined as occurring from 1947 to 1966. Canadian soldiers were repatriated later than American servicemen, and Canada's birthrate did not start to rise until 1947. Most Canadian demographers prefer to use the later date of 1966 as the boom's end year in that country. The later end than the U.S. is ascribed to a later adoption of birth control pills. In the United States more babies were born during the seven years after 1948 than in the previous 30, causing a shortage of teenage babysitters. Madison, New Jersey, for example, only had 50 high school girls to babysit for a town of 8,000, and any sitter could have had two sitting jobs at once if desired. $5 of the $7 that a California couple spent to go to the movies in 1950 went to the babysitter. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Australia and New Zealand. The volume of baby boom was largest in the world in New Zealand and second largest in the world in Australia. Like in the U.S. in New Zealand baby boom was stronger among Catholics than among Protestants, the author and columnist Bernard Salt places the Australian baby boom between 1946 and 1961. <laughs> <laughs> British Isles In the United Kingdom baby boom has occurred in two waves. After a short first wave of the baby boom during the war and immediately after it peaking in 1946, the United Kingdom experienced a second wave of this boom during the 1960s, with a peak in births in 1964. The baby boom in Ireland began during the state of emergency which existed in the country during the Second World War. 
Laws on contraception were restrictive in Ireland and the baby boom was more prolonged in this country. Secular decline of fertility began only in 1970s and particularly after the legalization of contraception in 1979. The marriage boom was even more prolonged and do not recede until 1980s. Topic: <inaudible> Western Europe. France and Austria has experienced the strongest baby boom in Europe. In contrast to most of the other countries, French and Austrian baby booms were driven primarily by increase in marital fertility. In French case, pronatalist policies proposed to be an important factor in this increase. Weaker baby boom has occurred in Germany, Switzerland, Belgium and the Netherlands. <laughs> Southern Europe Baby boom was absent or very weak in Italy, Greece, Portugal and Spain. There were however regional variations in Spain with the considerable baby boom occurring in such regions as Catalonia. <laughs> <laughs> Eastern Europe There was a strong baby boom in Czechoslovakia, but it was weak or absent in Poland, Bulgaria, Russia, Estonia and Lithuania. <inaudible> Nordic countries The baby boom was very strong in Norway and Iceland, significant in Finland, moderate in Sweden and relatively weak in Denmark. Asia and Africa Along with developed countries of the West, many developing countries among them Morocco, China and Turkey also witnessed the baby boom. The baby boom in Mongolia, one of such developing countries, is probably explained by improvement in health and living standards related to the establishment of a socialist society. Topic. Latin America The baby boom has occurred at the same time as in the West in the most of Latin American countries with the exception of Brazil, Argentina and Uruguay. An increase in fertility was driven by a decrease in childlessness and, in most nations, by increase in parity progression to second, third and fourth births. Its magnitude was largest in Costa Rica and Panama. See also Baby boom Baby boomers Aging in the American workforce Post-World War II economic expansion Bibliography Barkin, Elliot Robert from All Points, America's Immigrant West, 1870s-1952, 2007, 598 pages Barrett, Richard E., Donald J. Bogue, and Douglas L. Anderton. The Population of the United States Third Edition, 1997, Compendium of Data Carter, Susan B., Scott Sigmund Gartner, Michael R. Haynes, and Alan L. Olmsted, eds. The Historical Statistics of the United States Cambridge Up, 6 Volume, 2006 Volume 1 on Population, Available Online, Massive Data Compendium, Online Version in Excel Chadwick Bruce A. and Tim B. Heaton, eds. Statistical Handbook on the American Family. 1992 Easterlin, Richard A. The American Baby Boom in Historical Perspective, 1962, the single most influential study complete text online. Easterlin, Richard A. Birth and Fortune, The Impact of Numbers on Personal Welfare, 1987, by Leading Economist Excerpt and Text Search. Gillen, Steve. 
Boomer Nation, the largest and richest generation ever, and how it changed America 2004, by leading historian, excerpt and text search. Hawes Joseph M. and Elizabeth I. Nybakken, eds. American Families, a research guide and historical handbook. Greenwood Press, 1991 Klein, Herbert S. A. Population History of the United States. Cambridge University Press, 2004. 316 pp. Makanovich, Diane J. Birthquake, The Baby Boom and Its Aftershocks 2002 excerpt and text search Mint Stephen and Susan Kellogg. Domestic Revolutions, A Social History of American Family Life. 1988 Wells, Robert V. Uncle Sam's Family 1985, General Demographic History Vice, Jessica. To Have and to Hold, Marriage, The Baby Boom, and Social Change 2000 excerpt and text search.